Welcome to the art exhibit and meet the artist for the Chesapeake Bay watercolorist for December 2022. I'm your host, Sandy Hopkins, librarian for the Virginia Beach Public Library. And the co-host is Robert Kennedy, volunteer art gallery coordinator for the Central Library in Virginia Beach. Thanks, Sandy, and welcome to all. We appreciate you joining us. Founded in 1980, the Chesapeake Bay Watercolorist has members from across the Hampton Roads area. The organization brings together watercolor artists of all levels of experience for the purpose of sharing knowledge, providing opportunities to exhibit, and learning more about the art and practice of watercolor through monthly programs with visiting artists, demonstrations, critiques, and workshops. Chesapeake Bay Watercolors is open to all local artists and art enthusiasts. It's an active group with many also holding memberships and signature memberships in the American Watercolor Society and the Virginia Watercolor Society. Several of these artists have paintings in private collections throughout the U.S. and internationally. With us today is Rowena F. Finn, the Chesapeake Bay Watercolors current president and a member since 2019. She's a botanical watercolorist known for incorporating gold leaf and silver leaf accents into her detailed paintings of plants and flowers. Rowena is an instructor at the Governor's School of the Arts and teaches drawing and watercolor workshops for the Chrysler Museum, the Norfolk Botanical Gardens, Virginia Beach Arts Center, and Barrier Island Center in Cape Charles. Welcome, Rowena. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. My name, uh, again, is Rowena Finn, and I am currently the president of the Chesapeake Bay Watercolorists. Um, as you can see in the slide here, this is a painting by one of our longtime members, Peter Mikulka. And I just wanted to share a little information tonight about our group and give a sampling of some of the work that you might see in our show this month. Um, so our organization is a group of people that just love learning and painting in watercolor. Uh, we are a mix of hobbyists, beginners, people who dabble in all different kinds of art. We have people who paint in oil and who do lots of other different kinds of painting, but they also love watercolor. Some of us are professionals who compete um, in juried exhibitions. And what's so wonderful about this group, what I have fallen in love with about this group is that everybody has some wonderful information to offer and everybody's very willing to help each other uh, learn about watercolor, which is a very tricky medium. Uh, the fun thing about our groups is that every meeting that we have, we usually have an artist come and give a demonstration and uh, we can bring in works that we're working on, you know, different paintings that we're working on and get critiques, which are always really helpful and help bring out the best in each of our paintings. And then, um, you know, we try to do workshops so that we can learn from each other and other teachers out of the area. Uh, this is a painting by another member, uh, Al Phillips. And um, let's see, this one is by Cheryl Lemon. Uh, just a little bit more information about us. Our group has been around since about 1980. And um, I have only been a member of the group for a few years, but it really has been a, a wonderful organization. I've really learned a lot. Uh, and we just, it's this great group because there are so many different ways that you can use watercolor. And when we say watercolor and water media, um, there are those of us that, you know, mainly paint with watercolor, but water media encompasses anything where you use water to, you know, basically clean up your mess. So things like acrylic and gouache and uh, tempera. Um, and a lot of the work, most of the time we are painting on paper, but some of us do experiment with different things. So there's painting on boards or painting on um, canvas. And uh, as you'll see in some of the other paintings that I'm showing, uh, there's um, a little bit of mixed media involved. Not everybody uses strictly watercolor. So there's just 
so much imagination and creativity going on um, that you you know there's something for everybody, which is really wonderful. So these are some pictures of you know from some of our meetings on the um, on the left side. You can see um, this is us enjoying a demonstration by a local artist. And even though um, this artist isn't strictly a watercolorist, uh, she does use watercolor in a lot of her works in a different way than a lot of us do. So it was a really interesting um, session for us because we got to see a completely different way of working with watercolor than from what we're used to. Uh, she uses her watercolors very dry, almost like, um, it's like she she her brushes are so dry she almost scrubs just a little bit of paint on it. it's like putting on a little bit of makeup on your paper um, but it it ends up being this really neat effect that we didn't even know watercolor could do and then the picture on the the right uh, you can see one of our members leading a critique where uh, you know some of our artists brought in paintings that they weren't sure they were finished with yet so we'll give them you know some advice or we'll just tell them to go ahead and sign it you know it's done um and you know that's always a great thing to do because you know no matter what stage you are in your painting it's always helpful to get this kind of feedback because as artists we tend to be very solitary we go in our studios and we paint and a lot of times we don't have a lot of interaction with people but these critiques end up being really valuable because we kind of get inside our own heads and and it, it's helpful to have somebody else taking a look at your work and, and seeing you know where the strengths are and where it might be a little deficient and help you make a stronger work of art and uh every usually about twice a year we hold um a member show so these are some photos from some of our member shows uh, now, our, our show that's upcoming at the Central Library is a little different for us, so it's more of a relaxed show where we're not going to be uh, doing awards like we normally do because we really wanted to open it up to uh, anybody to just show some of their work without that pressure that there usually is, um, which is a really fun opportunity for us because it's, it's a little bit more relaxing. So we're really excited about um, being able to, to show at the Central Library because we haven't ever shown there as a group, even though we've had members have shows there. And I just wanted to show a few other paintings. So this one, if, if I remember correctly, uh, member Jackie Cavish, um, she may have done this plein air. And that's when you actually take all of your paint supplies out and you paint on location. And it's always a really interesting challenge because sunlight and lighting situations and weather just change from moment to moment. So you never really know what you're going to end up with. And even though, you know, this is kind of an abstracted piece because there's not a lot of tiny detail, it's still a really beautiful scene that you can see exactly where she's, you know, in the shaded area. Um, and there's like a little bit of a fence here with the trees. Uh, and I think that she just captured that the lighting and the colors really beautifully. And here are two other paintings. The one on the left is by uh, Sheila Nash and she, you know, you can see hers is much more realistic and she's got a lot of detail and that wood grain and the, the detail in the ropes, it looks very realistic and the colors are very nice and bright. And if you look at this painting by Richard Brewer, it honestly reminds me a little bit of a Monet. And if you can see that in his photo, it's a little shiny. It's because he's just using his paint in a different way where it's a little thicker. He may have even varnished it. Um, pretty sure it is still a piece on paper, like the painting's actually on paper, but it, he either varnished it or is using like a thicker application of paint. And it's, it's just really interesting because it looks almost like pastel. And yet you can still get that effect with the paints. Um, this may have even been acrylic. I think it was watercolor. I remember him bringing it in for a critique and everybody just absolutely loved the way he handled the light here. Um, but I mean, it's just a really beautiful painting and it's really fun because everybody has such a different styles. This is a painting by N Namiko Mahoney. And again, this is a little more on the realistic side where she's got this beautiful nest that she's taken a picture of. And, you know, she's, you can see so much detail in here with the leaves and, and all of the twigs of this nest. 
and it's a really nice composition. And then uh, this one on the left is actually one of mine, which is funny. I've, I've always loved this painting uh, just because of what I could do with the lighting and it's not even the way I normally paint. I usually do botanical pictures, but um, my, my sister and brother-in-law had taken this photo on one of their vacations in Italy. And I just, I really loved the lighting and the stucco wall um, and the textures. So this one was a really fun painting for me to do. And then on, on the right here uh, by our um, member, Charles Francis, is this beautiful scene of the beach where you have this lone figure here. And I just love how much detail there is in the character sitting in here. And then the really nice detail on the fence along the back edge there. And, you know, we're, we're using similar color palettes, but we're tackling totally different scenes and choosing to emphasize different details. And this is a painting by Mary Lou Andrews. And if you can see that kind of a crinkly texture, she actually adds this, I think it, I want to say it's like a tissue paper that she scrunches up and paints down onto her paper and lets it dry. And then when she's got that texture set and dry, then she'll go over it with her watercolor paint. She'll draw in her drawing and then she'll add her watercolor. So it's a completely different style than anybody else in the group does, but it's really effective. And she has this really beautiful series of porches with these empty chairs. And I love them because there's sort of this quiet aloneness, like not lonely because her porch scenes are always very inviting, even though there are no people already sitting in them welcoming you. It's like the lighting and the color schemes and the shadows. She just has this way of making these empty chairs look like you just want to climb up the steps on that porch and, and sit and make yourself at home. So I wanted to invite everybody. The library has graciously blocked off some time for us to come in and do a demonstration. So on Saturday, December 17th from 11 to 1 p.m., uh, I will be at the library in the area where our show is doing a watercolor demonstration. And I really hope people come out to see us and our artwork. Thanks very much, Rowena. That was really good, uh, very well articulated, and a nice showcase for uh, the variety. I was very impressed by the variety of styles, and also your mention of the different surfaces and types of watercolor, uh, gouache and acrylic, um, and also the one that was nearly dry, because I'd heard about uh, using a dry type. Uh, so that was very interesting. Um, I was wondering just for yourself, when you first became interested in art. Oh, gosh, when was I not interested? Oh, okay, in go art? on. <laughs> um, but I did first, I've been doing art pretty much my whole life. Uh, but I became interested in watercolor about 5 or 6 years ago. Um. And I will tell you that my, my first attempts, I thought were so bad. I didn't want to pick it up again um, because watercolor is so tricky. Uh, water doesn't always do what you want it to do. It is tough. Yes. And it's not as forgiving, if you will, as oil paint. Um, I think. I agree with uh, you there. Cause I do, I paint in oil too. And I, I personally find oil to be a lot easier than watercolor and and I love doing them both, but um, there's just something about watercolor uh, that I enjoy the challenge and I enjoy uh, kind of having to, like what I always tell people is with watercolor, you have to learn to shake hands and agree to disagree sometimes because if you let it, if you let go of control, um, the water and the pigments will do things that you could never do on your own. And nine times out of 10, it's better than what you could have done. Very good description. 
And you also uh, incorporate, as I understand, silver leaf and gold leaf sometimes into your uh, uh, watercolors. Yes. So I I really love doing botanical paintings. So my paintings tend to be realistic, sort of like portraits, I would say, of of plants and flowers. And I like to have usually a white border where I don't add any paint. And then I will come in and sort of frame the plant with a little bit of gold leaf or silver leaf. Sounds great. And you also mentioned using a photograph. You mentioned some of your members painting on location. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, is that um, the norm would a, a lot of them, or does it vary using photographs or uh, location or just imagination as well? Yeah, I would say that that is probably all of it. Some people work from imagination or we'll have like a reference photo just to kind of jumpstart the idea and then, you know, stray from reality. Uh, some people will go out and do paintings on site. And if they can't finish it, they might take a photo of it and finish it in the studio. Um, I, a lot of us do work from photos simply because it's very convenient. The light doesn't change, you know, your, your subject doesn't move around. Um, I can tell you that with me working with plants, um, a strict botanical illustrator will work from life. But plants actually move kind of fast, faster than I can draw because I'm really, really slow. So I like working from photographs uh, just because I get everything set the way I want it to and then I can take my time. Very good. And I think an important thing is where your organization meets, uh, how often, and also how people would join your organization. Yeah, so we have a website and um, it is cbw-art.com and you can join there and see works by many of our other members. Uh, we meet once a month. We're actually um, doing a little bit of restructuring because we usually take summers off um, but lately we felt like the summer break was a little too long. So now we're going to meet throughout the year and take a month off here and there instead. And um, our December meeting this year is going to be at the Virginia Beach Art Center and the Artist Gallery uh, down near the oceanfront. And uh, you can definitely find out more information about that at our website. And then starting in January, we will actually be meeting at the Chrysler Museum um, every month because our organization is growing and there are just a lot of us and we've kind of outgrown our beloved Virginia Art Center, Virginia Beach Art Center. Well, that's excellent that uh, you're getting so many members and, the, and they draw from all over the uh, Hampton Roads area, as mm -hmm. I understand. So, um, well, excellent. Well, again, thank you very much. That was a wonderful presentation. And we invite uh, all of you to join us for the reception again, Wednesday night, December 7th, 6 to 7.30 PM in the gallery area of Central Library. Their uh, show will be on display all through the month of December. And again, also stop by for the demo with Rowena on Saturday, December 17th. So thanks again, Rowena. We're looking forward to your show and uh, thanks to all for joining us. And we hope you join us again next month for another Meet the Artist show.